Hello, and welcome to In the Crease. This is your I am your host, Carl Mogline, and we are covering the game two of the Stanley Cup. It just ended a few minutes ago with Boston evening up the series one to one with a two one overtime win over the Chicago Blackhawks. <clears throat> Daniel Paye scoring the goal winner thirteen forty eight into overtime. Of course, this is the second straight game that they have gone into overtime. Only the Fourth time in Stanley Cup Finals history. The first two games have gone to overtime. And let let me just say this is, was a great game. Especially, I want to highlight a couple players. Mainly Tuka Rask, I think, had a really, really good game. Faced 34 Chicago shots. Turned away all but one shot in the first period by Patrick Sharp. A little more on that goal later. Also, Daniel Paye, he had that goal, and he also had an assist earlier, had a really good game, really chipping away, and that really, really good game for the Boston Bruins, although I did like the way the Chicago Blackhawks played well. Just these two teams seem very, very evenly matched, and that is really shown by the boat, the two OTs that have happened in this series. It really shows these teams are much more evenly matched than I originally thought. Uh, going on to my earlier predictions, I originally picked the Bruins in five. Well, I don't think the Bruins are going to win five. I still think they're going to win possibly in six, but most likely in seven. And uh, I look, again, for Tuka Rask to, consi- to consistently be the difference maker in this series, as he was tonight, turning away multiple shots that some goalies would let in in the overtime period and earlier in the game just some spectacular saves from the goaltender for the Boston Bruins. All right, we'll be back with more coverage after this break. This is In the Crease. Hello, welcome back to In the Crease. We we are on our continuing coverage of game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Once again, Boston Bruins take it 2 to 1 in overtime evening up the series. And this is a big win for them. Falling into an 0-2 hole is almost impossible to climb out of. And uh, this is big for the Bruins. Now they take back this series to Boston and TD Ameritrade. And uh, it looks like Boston might have this series in a good position for themselves. Of course, home is definitely a more popular, has a better winning percentage than the away games. Splitting is just fine for them, especially with how good they played, especially... That how close game one was, even in the loss. Either team could have won, especially how late that game went. And that game, of course, was the 4-3 game in three overtimes. And that game plus this game, we have played over 180 minutes of hockey. That means we are currently over three games worth of hockey in this series so far. That is absolutely outstanding. All right, now looking back. At the game from today, of course, Chicago Blackhawks jumped out first. Patrick Sharp scoring on a really interesting shot. It was kind of a bunch of traffic in the front of the net and came around. But the Blackhawks in this first period shot 19 shots and managed to get one in. And I think the key for them in this with this goal and the key for moving on to keep up good work is just this traffic in front of the net they created. And that's how they created all this those shots 19-4 to 4 was the shot count. Bruins only four. Blackhawks dominated. Really, really dominated that first period. And it really was getting men in front of the net, working hard for loose pucks, and doing all of that. Alright, and then you go on, but of course in the second period, we got the Bruins. The Bruins came back and tied it up with Chris Kelly's goal. Daniel Paye working hard, comes around the net, and uh, puts one on, and Chris... Kelly knocks home the rebound, just Caden Card Again, getting guys to the net, and I think, especially with these goaltenders, they're not going to get beat by easy shots. They're getting beat by shots that, I mean, should be a lot of goaltenders. You, you're, you got to bring guys to the net. you got to work hard. And this is the biggest thing so far in the series that I'm seeing, and I think it's it's going to continue throughout this, these, this whole series, especially with Tuka Rask. And Corey Crawford playing at an outstanding, outstanding level of goaltending. Tuka Rask, of course, is my pick for the uh, MVP of this playoffs the year. And of course, of course, Daniel Paye had the winner in overtime. And uh, 
yeah, just working hard and getting a puck on net. And, of course, the Bruins only had 28 shots this game compared to Chicago's 34, most of those coming in the first period. Boston never once topped eight shots in a period. Three times they did that in the second, third, and overtime. But, really, I think if they want to be successful, they do need a much, much better time on that. Also, both teams had no success on the power play in this game. Uh, the Bruins had six pen I mean, six penalty minutes of so three penalties, giving the Blackhawks three opportunities to cash in on that, and I feel like they really kind of wasted it. Bruins had had two power plays off of the Blackhawks' miscues, and neither team could take advantage. All right, we'll be back, and after this break, we're going to have coverage of Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals and my pick for that one. All right, we'll be back. Hello, and welcome back to In the Crease. I'm your host, Carl Mogline, and we are looking at Game 2 and now going on to Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Bruins and Blackhawks facing off for the best trophy in American sports. All right, looking into Game 3, this is going back to Boston. And this game will be played in two days on Monday, June 17th. All right, for this game, the biggest key for the Blackhawks is trying to get back to a form they were in last in the first period of this last game and the first game of really being hard to the net and getting shots on. Last game, 19 shots in the first period. But after that, only 15 in the next three period, well, two periods and a half with overtime included in that. I find that a major issue for this Chicago team. If they cannot get pucks to the net, they just, of course, one of my favorite quotes from Wayne Gretzky, the great one, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that's really what happened to Chicago in the second, third and period, and of course, overtime with only if you only take four or five shots, period, with a world class goaltender like to Karask, you're not going to get anything past. And I think that was a big, big issue, of course. And then looking for Boston, I think what it really is is finding one, finding lines that have chemistry. This is was a key to doing six having success this game. Chris Kelly, the guy, the person who scored. Boston's first goal moving up and that really helped them so really finding lines that have good chemistry and trying to find somebody who's gonna have a hot stick and uh, that is huge huge for Boston and it was huge in this first game and I think that's one of the biggest things for this and uh, we will be back and I will tell you my pick for game three and going on as the cup finals what to watch for thank you keep listening hello we're back to in the crease, I am still Carl Mogline, and we are looking at Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals. And I'm going to tell you right now, right here, that the Boston Bruins are going to take that game, and that's what I look for. I look for them to take get this Game 3 and Game 4. Might drop the 1 Game 5 in, in back in Chicago, and I look for them to take this series in 6, finishing it out in Boston that is my call for the Stanley Cup Finals, and this it must. It looks like we have just reached time. Thank you for listening. I will not be back this full week, but I will hopefully have a show Saturday or Friday, depending. Hopefully, the series lasts that long. And please do follow me personally at Carl underscore PM. That's at Twitter and uh, on Facebook in the crease with Carl Mogline. With the network National Sports on Spreaker, this is the real, which is what I'm very thankful for. This network is huge for this show in the crease, and I couldn't do without them. So please follow at National Sports 1 on Twitter. And we have our website, uh, suddenimpact14.wix.com slash national sports. And uh, facebook.com slash online sports radio. That's where you can find us there. Please follow follow and like all these pages it really helps us and don't forget in the crease with carl mogline on facebook great follow and uh thank you for listening hopefully back saturday this has been in the crease thank you